Hello everyone, Miss Silla here, Learn to Grow. Time for another garden tour. I know it's been about four and a half weeks since the last one, just haven't had time to do this, and I'm so excited to share with you guys what's growing and how things are coming along and what we've been harvesting. So we're going to walk around the garden, see what's going on, and then we'll walk over to the miniature orchard to see what's going on over there, which is really not much because of the weather fluctuations. So a lot of the flowers from the apple trees and pear trees fell or dropped. Um, it got really cold and hot, so, but that's okay. Hopefully next year will be better. Here is the greenhouse in the works. My husband has put a lot of time on this. I am so grateful even with his busy schedule. So I'll be doing a tour of that soon, guys, okay? So over here are some pepper plants on, in this Calicam Smart Pots and a couple of tomato plants in this bigger fabric container some mint this is just some random stuff in this garden bed although this is where i'll be planting the sweet potato slips and sweet potatoes that i have been rooting indoors so we'll see how that goes we don't have a really warm enough weather here and it takes about 100 days for that to for them to mature and produce sweet potatoes but that's okay if they don't produce anything we'll just be eating the greens as usual and you can cook them like you would with spinach or kale so the potato sweet potato leaves are edible not the normal potato they are actually two different my phone got cut off i had a phone call coming in sorry about that anyway sweet potato is not in the same family as the conventional potatoes that we eat which are part of the nightshade family same family as eggplant tomatoes and peppers now the normal potatoes that we eat have leaves that are not edible because it contains a poisonous alkaloid that can make you sick so only sweet potato leaves are edible so just make sure not to eat the other potato leaves okay so only sweet potatoes. Let's head towards the back. These are 30 gallon fabric pots and I have potatoes planted in all of these. They actually just started sprouting, mulch them with some hay, wanna keep the potatoes covered as they grow. That way they don't turn green. So again, regular potatoes will turn green if they are exposed to light. And if they turn green, they are not edible because they will contain that poisonous alkaloid that can make you sick. Okay, over here, just some random things growing in these two garden beds here. Um, got some strawberries, some volunteer elephant garlic. Looks like they're almost ready to be harvested. This is a carrot top that I planted from scrap, and it looks like it's about to produce some flowers, which will go to seed and give us some seeds. And let's see, a couple of young plants in here. I think this is sage and goji berry in some pots. Some hanging baskets that I planted that I have not hung up yet. This is apple blossom geranium and these are fuchsia. More geranium there, another geranium in there. And this is a little strawberry pot that I planted for my friend and his kids. There's some strawberries in there though. And over here are some potted plants. Got some dahlia in this plant here that I planted from seed. Some fuchsia, vining fuchsia one of the fig trees and it has not come out of its dormancy stage although it is still alive it's not brown and um, there's still some green color in there another fig tree young fig tree and over in this garden bed are some lots of strawberries that I moved around last year that I planted and moved, there, uh, moved from a different location but check out how big these leaves are so these might not be fruiting this year um, there were the baby strawberry plants that I moved from the other mother strawberry plants. But we'll see, maybe it'll produce for us in the fall. But remember, I've been feeding our strawberry plants, pretty much our whole garden with worm casting and worm casting tea. So i um, seeing a lot of growth and they are growing fa at a faster rate. And over here are some volunteer potato plants. So I just left them there. So I normally don't like to kill plants because we're going to get some food from these plants. So another potato plant back over there. I think these are red potatoes. And these are Jerusalem artichokes that I planted last fall. They're about maybe five and a half feet tall right now. This is a little herb garden that I planted for my one of my best friends. I'm gonna head back towards my left here, some potted plants. I think got some pumpkins planted in here, some pumpkin seeds, although the squirrels keep digging them up, so I keep having to sow them, unfortunately. Another fig tree that I haven't planted in the ground or in a bigger pot. And I planted a couple of hardy hibiscus crowns in this big pot. This is a 20 gallon pot. More tomatoes in random pots. These are ones I'm giving away to family and friends. So some herbs back there, potted herbs, basil. Um, I think this is stevia. And then our little raised freestanding garden box. Got some lettuce growing in there. 
Another tomato plant I'm giving to my niece and nephew. These are the two sungle tomato plants that I'm growing in only coconut coir and warm castings. Wanted to make sure that the tomatoes get enough nutrients since coconut coir does not contain any at all. So you want to make sure you put um, enough nutrients in there. So compost or coconut or warm castings, which is what I'm using. I used about maybe five pounds of warm castings for each of these pots. And these pots are about 20 gallons each. So let's head over to our main garden here. So remember, I always grow the herbs along the border of the garden. So actually, let me just walk over here. Lemon balm, lavender, more lemon balm. They are so huge. It's so They're so tall and they're just really wide. I need to trim them back. As you can see, they're about to produce some seeds or flower because the leaves are getting smaller on the top. So these need to be cut down and normally I print about a third of the plant. That way it'll um, not go to seed. We don't want lemon balm to go to seed. They will grow like weeds around your, uh, throughout your garden. Same thing with oregano. This is huge too. So I need to prune this back as soon as possible. A younger lemon balm plant. And some primroses. This is lantana. Beautiful little flowers. I just planted that a few days ago in these pots. Rosemary. These are were started from cuttings about I think two years ago now. Look how big they are. Little hanging basket with some petunia, verbena, and some phlox. Pick this up on clearance or close out from our local grocery store. It's about 12 bucks for this uh, big pot of beautiful flowers. Over here are some potted plants. This is chocolate berry. I cannot wait to harvest these yummy berries. They taste between chocolate and coffee. Met a couple of friends from social media and they give us this uh, baby um, plant last summer. It was so tiny, probably not even a foot tall and it's about maybe three and a half feet tall now. Beautiful foliage. Cannot wait to harvest from this. And I planted some geranium in there as well as some fuchsia. Little pot of fuchsia, geranium, and some chives. Got a couple of primroses in those pots there. And this one has some fuchsia and Oh gosh, chamomile, almost forgot. Now this one is a garden box that we moved from the south side of the garden where we were built. We are building the greenhouse, so we had to find a new location. It's an older box. It is about four by four and got a an, an irrigation system in this one. So planted some beans and some zucchini squash. Although something's digging them up and I caught the squirrel. See all those holes? They have been digging up the seeds so i keep sowing and it's it is so frustrating see something ate the leaves off the squash so i've been sowing the past two three weeks and i just keep starting all over again so i might have to just buy some young plants and plant them in here or maybe i should have started them indoors so next time that's a good lesson for me some fig trees in the 20 gallon pots so they are doing so well and we have honey figs and desert king. Not sure which variety is which because I did not label them. But these were gifted from to us from my aunt and uncle. And also planted some strawberries on the bottom of the pot. Of course, I had to find them at home. So I went ahead and planted them in here. Could be a temporary home so that way I don't overcrowd the fig tree. Oh my gosh, I just noticed how big this leaf is. Look, the strawberry leaf. Look at that, guys. It's huge. It's got to be at least eight inches across. That's probably one of the biggest strawberry leaves I ever, I've ever seen. Primroses, lupine. So let's walk back in the garden and we'll go up the steps here. Oh, oregano. More, let's see, this is a rosemary sage that has a lot of flowers that are already dried up. I need to prune this back. The mint is just beautiful. But if you don't want them to, to grow throughout your garden, you might want to plant them in a window box style container. That smells so good. And some of these things are kind of overcrowding right now, so I need to prune some herbs back. There are some cilantro in there, pineapple sage. These get really tall to at least about five to six feet tall. So last time I grew them was about four years ago and they got really tall and wide. But they have beautiful trumpet like red flowers so beautiful and they're edible the leaves and the flowers now this is a couple of dinosaur kale they are just huge guys i think they crossed with the um, kale or collard green collard greens last year because the leaves are extra wide normally dinosaur kale do not have leaves this wide 
but you can see it looks like dinosaur kale so it's like a cross between that and maybe the colored colored greens or kale that i planted last year you can see the texture of dinosaur kale and i went ahead and picked out some green cabbage worms from this one as you can see see the holes so i found them and i fed them to the chickens yesterday stood back a little bit here so i can show you the strawberries so looking lush and green getting a few berries although we we're having some pollination issues a lot of the bees left when we had extreme temperatures we went all the way to 93 degrees and down to 40s and a lot of the bees kind of disappeared and left and they were here for a short while pollinating mainly the sage flowers though and the other flowers but not so much the strawberry flowers so we've been getting a few strawberries here and there but every time there's a ripe one it disappears i think the squirrels are taking them again so over on this side this is the perpetua blueberry bush it's about i think two years old this bears fruit in the summer and again in the fall another dinosaur kale a little smaller but again it looks like it crossed with another um, kale or colored green the leaves are not as long and skinny lemon balm chocolate mint in a pot here that's another lemon balm and those lemon balm that i'm showing you they just kind of uh, self-seeded from a, a few years ago and they just kind of pop up anywhere in the garden some potted plants on the deck here these are plants i'm giving away strawberries mint basil some random plants and more chocolate mint and over to my right this is the bay leaf that i've been growing for the past two years now and look at all those new leaves so i'm going to maybe propagate this again cut off the new shoots and root those but anyways um it's actually adapted to our climate we had a really heavy snow last season last winter and it survived that thank goodness i mulched it with about four inches of dry dried leaves so hopefully that helped but it looks like it's doing quite well it's starting to bush out this one is spartan blueberry i've got two bushes there's another one over here so lots of fruits here looks like we're going to be getting some bears hopefully we get to them before the squirrels and the birds do this one is blue jay blueberry so normally i plant the blueberries and blueberries in the miniature orchard but i'm kind of integrating them here because we have more sun on this side of the garden and this one here is malva malva is from the mallow family so you can eat the flowers pretty mild taste for you to decorate cakes or desserts this gets to about six seven feet tall if you grow it in full sun it does really well and the flowers are very pretty and attracts bees the bees love this flower or this plant and they also self-seed easily so watch out because see that <laughs> i've been pulling them out out of the ground the past month so i'm going to go over to my left here so this is that long garden box it's about 10 feet tall and about two and a half feet in width got a sun gold tomato planted in there cilantro that's bolting spinach that's bolting so i've been feeding this to the chickens because they're not um, that tasty they're more bitter so a lot of the greens that you grow once they bolt or flower they will start to uh, start to taste bitter and i planted some squash seeds in here as well another volunteer kale or dinosaur kale and this was a chinese cabbage um, starting to bald as well sold some cucumber seeds about three weeks ago maybe longer than that and i just kept sowing because the squirrels kept digging them up so i need to pull these spinach out soon so they can get some light so i got some cucumber going along there and right here are scarlet runner beans so the seeds about two weeks ago let me lift this up here and this is the scarlet runner bean tuber that came back looks like something's uh oh oh no looks like it got dug up anyways that was growing from the tuber but this is a tuber and scarlet runner beans put out this tuber once it's established it looks like um, a sweet potato not as big but they are perennial plants where the climate a climate is mild or moderate and i had about six tubers along here from last um, summer and fall but we had so much snow about 18 inches that they rotted and when all that melted so only one tuber, tuber survived so i'll be uploading that tuber video soon i forgot about that and i can show you how it looks like and you can eat the tuber the young leaves and flowers and the young pods as well as the mature beans that as a shelling bean of course you'll have to cook those so on the other side of this box are some borage great uh, plant to attract pollinators bees and butterflies love it 
some raspberries. So these are planted on the other side. These are the raspberries that I moved from the miniature or orchard because it has gotten so shady over there. So I wanted to move them in full sun where they do much better. So we've been harvesting some raspberries. Now we'll move over to this box here. So lots of greens over here. These are some volunteer kale. Could be uh, collard greens too. Russian kale, these are all volunteer plants that I uprooted throughout the garden and I went ahead and planted them in this box. That way I don't step on them. <laughs> uh, Price said lettuce, so beautiful. Kelly Kim introduced me to this lettuce. Such a beautiful variety, tastes so good when it's fresh especially. Love this uh, variety of lettuce. Red cabbage, and I actually had to pick up or pick out some green cabbage worms from this. See the hole? So I found a cabbage worm there yesterday. So there's more red cabbage. I think that's a bok choy that is going to see that toppled over. Also got some onions, red onions planted in between the brassicas in hopes that they will deter insect pests because of the, their pungent smell or scent. And the broccoli is doing well. There's some crowns over there, guys. See that? Some beautiful crowns. This looks like about to, it's about to bolt because our temperature just keeps fluctuating, hot and cold. So sometimes when the temperatures fluctuate that much, uh, or there's a big difference in temperature, it can make your plants stress out and they want to reproduce and just go to seed and not produce anymore, so. Okay, and over here are the snow peas and um, oriental peas. We've been harvesting this almost every day. There's a lot of peas in there, look at that guys. And got some nasturtium planted around this boulder. These are the dwarf nasturtium variety. And I'll show you the other ones. The other ones have more color. So these are not the trailing ones. So they only get up to about maybe 18 inches to 24 inches tall. Our strawberry patch. Got a Roma tomato planted here. Started from seed. Another Roma right here on this side. Let me go to the right. So more raspberry plants. Lots of berries in there, they're still kind of green. Yeah, they're still green, but soon enough they'll ripen up. There's a couple that ripen up here and there. Row of garlic, hardneck garlic. I went ahead and harvested the scapes about two weeks ago and some a few days ago. Some of them just kind of um, started to put out those scapes or flower stalks late. These are some Russian kale that bolted, went to seed. So I usually let them go to seed because the bees love the flowers. And also I save the seeds for microgreens. I'm gonna turn around to my left, over this way. This is red aurac. So you would prepare this like you would with spinach. And it is uh, more of a heat tolerant greens. Not really, a, not really green, but it's red. But anyways, you know what I mean? And um, they will tolerate the summer months better. So that way you can keep harvesting some leafy greens. Some red onions planted in there as well. More raspberry plant to my left. And there's the borage. And a lot of them toppled over because we had a windstorm and some rain. And over in this row, I had to pull out some potato plants. They were diseased. They started to turn yellow with black and brown spots. So harvested some baby potatoes in those, from those and went ahead and sowed some squash seeds. There's one that's finally germinating. Hopefully the squirrels don't dig them up again. And then elephant garlic to my right. So row of elephant garlic. And then some potato plants over that way. A couple more potato plants. And there's the blueberry bush again. So I'll just stand back here so you can see everything from afar what we went through so far, and I'll walk around over here. These are some Egyptian walking onions. Look at that. There's some tiny onion seeds that you can plant this fall. And I've got some Dahlia tubers planted here. Only these sprouted because they, they were dug up again from this, by the squirrel. So a lot of them just rotted away or started drying up. Fuchsia. And over here, I've got a row of tomatoes and basil. These are the mini bell or dwarf tomatoes. So they'll only grow to about 18 inches to 24 inches tall. Then I got some um, purple or opal basil seedlings that I planted from seeds. And this basil is not looking so great. It's starting to get brown spots as well. So 
Yeah, every time you see yellowing leaves or any leaves that look diseased, you want to re remove them from your plants so that way you don't attract any more insect pests and or so that way you don't spread the viruses or disease, other disease that your plant might have to surrounding plants. More garlic, hardneck garlic varieties. I think this might be, some of these garlic is Italian and some are music garlic. So now I'm on to my left here are more nasturtiums. This is again the dwarf varieties. So I got some jewel mix. Look how beautiful they are. Yellows, oranges. Just some of the patterns are very unique and vibrant. Look at that. And then let me go around over here so I can show you. The bright or dark red ones are Empress of India. Also have darker leaves or darker foliage. Look at that. See the difference in the leaves? So pretty. And the rest of these are the jewel. Mixed jewel. There's a yellow, which one? It's really pretty right there. Look at that, guys. So, yeah, I just planted here, planted them here as a border around this bird bath. And it's per perfect because they don't grow that long and they don't really trail. They are the dwarf variety, so it's perfect for small spaces or in pots. And also, by the way, guys, they are susceptible to aphids. So make sure you inspect your plants in the morning or whenever you get a chance to go in your garden. Check on the under underside of the leaves. They usually hide in there and sometimes in the flower buds. I actually spotted some. Here are some black aphids. Look at that, guys. So you can spray them off your plant right away as soon as you spot them because they will devour your plants and it happens so quickly. And over here are some lemon thyme blooming the bees love this i need to cut them back though that way they'll produce more greens to um, harvest english thyme and this one is bergarten sage such a pretty plant the leaves are a little wider than the other traditional sage plants such a pretty variety some lavender pretty young plants and again there's the rosemary that we saw earlier another lavender this is french lavender i believe Another young plant. I've been pinching off the flowers so that way it'll encourage more growth instead of flowering. I want them to get um, more established and bigger. Another um, garden box with some random stuff, guys. I know I always do this. So potato plants in there, they are volunteer. So I just, like I said, I always, always leave them in there. I did plant some strawberries because they didn't have a home um, about a month or two months ago. And some random greens, colored greens kale in there that I'll be transplanting when it co comes closer to fall time but this is their temporary home so I'm gonna back up here real quick and then we'll head over to, to the miniature orchard this is Dahlia looks like we're about to get some flowers from this and then we'll go over to my right and straight ahead there's our rhubarb we're getting some new leaves sprouting I've been harvesting them this is Croscomia, it's a palm plant. The flowers are gorgeous, red flowers that uh, the hummingbirds love, as well as butterflies. This one here is a dwarf blackberry plant. Planted this um, over a year ago now. It was much smaller. Oh no, there's some vines. Morning glory vines. I don't want it to suffocate the plants, so I usually pull them out. Oh goodness. And it looks like there are some fruits starting to form. And here is our giant rhubarb plant, or plants, I should say, there are multiple plants in there. Over to my left are some blueberries. This one, oh, there's some berries in this one. So it's finally doing much better. It was really puny for a while. This one is top hat blueberry. There was only a few berries in this. This is actually great for small spaces, which is great for container gardening. So if you don't have much room, these, these make great container plants. This is blue jay blueberry. This one's pretty established. So you can see they're all still green, but the whole shrub is full of berries. And this one is Chippewa or Chippewa blueberry. Not as big as that blue jay, but it's putting out some fruit. Over and this one is Duke blueberry. A few clusters in there. Now very sad about the apple trees flowers fell and now it looks like I've noticed um, some a disease or something maybe some bugs look at that brown spots so I need to take care of this Fuji apple tree 
and this other one as well looks like the leaves are starting to curl and there are some brown spots on the leaves and our five-way pear tree had a bunch of flowers on it and they all fell um, cold temperatures and then hot just the fluctuations of temperature just really affected our trees so yeah really bummed about that over on this side oh here's the fire pit really messy i will be doing some cleaning up soon maybe i'll do a video on that uh, for you guys so we'll make this all look pretty get a leaf blower out this is some irises and siberian or serbian bellflower the purple one's very pretty look at that just let it sprawl out so this is our little rock garden with a little fountain that my husband put together um, last year this one is columbine I should have cut it back, but they're very pretty. That's a ton of seeds, guys. If you wanted to collect the seeds, you can. Um, or they self-seed columbine flowers. They're really pretty wildflowers. And these are some lilies about to bloom. So we'll get that next in our next tour. And this one here is mountain laurel. I love this one. So pretty. Look at those flowers, guys. Beautiful. So even though the apple trees in the miniature orchard are not doing well, our espaliered apple tree is producing, look at all those fruits. Now this is another great plant for small space, small space gardening because it is trained to grow sideways. So it does not take that much room at all. You can put this on the side of your house or on your patio or deck. So pretty excited about this one. So I'm gonna go over here and show you an overview of the garden from the deck. So remember those garden boxes there and the potatoes in those big containers. Some potted plants, herbs throughout the border of the garden. There we go. And then down here, that new garden box with some hopefully beans and squash, fig trees, leafy greens. strawberry patch so there we go i hope that you guys enjoy this video i hope that you guys enjoyed the tour today thank you so much for joining me i think we're about to get some rain so good timing and we'd love to hear from you guys let me know how your garden's coming along what you're harvesting leave a comment down below and also make sure to hit the notification bell so that way you don't miss an episode or a video i will see you in the next one have a wonderful day everyone and happy gardening is it yummy the best in the world. That strawberry, I think there's another one. I see it from here. I can see that red strawberry inside the bushes.